Good evening. Welcome to G. Stop's Morning School. I am your uh, minister for the night, Minister Alvin Kimball. We are teaching on the, how to strive with God. I have a topic I'm coming out of the uh, book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. But before I get started with the lesson, I want to just let me just pray in for a second, and we'll get started with the lesson. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for this evening, for allowing me to be here to teach this lesson that belongs to you. Father, I pray that set Alvin down and let the Holy Spirit do the teaching. Father, if anything I had left out of this prayer, you know my thoughts, you know my heart, and we say in your son, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. I'd like to give a thanks out to the pastor for being over this, uh, over the uh, G-Stop ministry, the first family, all the ministers, including the West. I'd like to thank y'all, but now it's time for me to break this lesson down, and we're going to take it step by step. All right. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26 says, But I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will be not grafted the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these opposite are each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you live by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evidence, sexual immorality, impurity, uh, adultery, sorcery, strife, jealousy, fit of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you as... I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit in the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against other things that, that there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we are led by the Spirit, let us also be kept in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envy of one another. All right. This is one of my favorite scriptures that I like to read. Matter of fact, this is one of my favorite sermons I like to break down because I love this. I love the way Paul separate those verses in that chapter. Uh, uh. Let me explain to you about some of those. We're not going to go through all of them. Some of those you could do your research on your own. But those first words I said, those first verses with the sorcery, the adultery, this was wrong with the world now. We're doing too much of that. And people are not paying attention. Some of us are, some of us not. But uh, we are in those days. We are in those days where they're making it out of a new normal. Like it's okay. It's okay to practice these type of things. It's all right to do these type of things, not knowing that, that uh, we ain't read the Bible and we haven't got to the part when uh, Christ said, depart from me, I never knew you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we doing these things like it's a new normal. You know what Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says? The, uh, 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 in those verses, it was said, uh, uh, good will become, evil will become good and good will become evil. You know, that's what Isaiah says in that, in that chapter 5, verses 20. But this is what we are dealing with. We are dealing with these things. We are dealing with things they have on TV programs. Uh, uh, Satan ain't hiding no more. And there's more than one Satan. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you the truth. There's more than one devil. That's why Isaiah chapter 14 says that I want to be like the most high. That means there's multiple of them. Because there's only one God, but there's multiple Satans. And those known as fallen angels. So let me get down to the description to let you know about the strive of God or why we acting, why we acting the way we acted. You know, we're in a generation right now where even the young kids don't even know who the Bible is. This generation is not afraid to die. They're not afraid of death. This is reason why we got to teach our youngsters about the Bible. Because as we get older and we see this next generation come up, if we don't take care of our business with these kids, then there will be no future for them. All they're going to know is violence. So... This is the reason why Galatians chapter 5 and that 16 to 26 verses give us the separation 
on what we're going to inherit and what we're not going to inherit. Now, if you got joy in your life, then I respect that. You got peace in your life, I respect that. If we have uh, self-control, I respect that because this is what we all need. We all need self-control of the things that we do in life. You know, we got to be cautious. We got to watch our surroundings. We got to have self-control we be on our job. You know, we got supervisors that will, uh, that will throw your name out in the trash. You know, and one thing I always tell my, I always tell my children and, and tell my people, uh, your name is all you got. You know, keep your name clean. You know, people can put dirt in your name, they'll toss your name around and shoot your name up and stab your name. And you know, your name needs to be up under uh, some protection. So the best thing you do on that is have self-control of your name. Have self-control about what you do. You can be on a job and you know folks ain't gonna like you or wherever you go. And the reason why I say job because that's where we are every day, five days a week, and sometimes, you know, overtime, whatever you want to call it, but that's where we at for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. So you're not at home all the time, so you at work. And the best thing we have to do at work is we got to protect our name. So what I'm getting at is these verses is, is, is uh, talking about what we will inherit and what we will not inherit. Uh, drunkenness, envy, uh, orgies, things like that, we have to be careful. We have to be very careful on that. So that's that's part of the title. It's called Keep Stepping with the Spirit. All right. So we're gonna go on and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you uh I'm gonna give you 35 verses of the Bible that what we're talking about with the strife of God. I'm not gonna give you all 35. I give you some that you can understand because some of this stuff needs to be explained. Okay. Let's go down to Acts chapter 26, verse 14, when it says, When we all have fallen into the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew dialect, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked him, you know, Jesus asked him a question. Is it hard for you to kick against the gold? See, what Saul was doing, was Saul was an assassin. Saul was killing up all the Christians. And when you kill up someone that belongs to God and belongs to Christ, then, yeah, you persecuting. You showing out. So that's why he asked him, why are you persecuting me? See, uh, any, anybody can persecute you if you're doing right. Because, see, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Getting saved and walking with Christ is a journey. Now, let me, let me explain something to you. Let me break this down so we can all get a clear understanding. If you live on a game banging life, like I used, you know, some of our youth or somebody you might know live a game banging activity, and they decide to change their life around and come to Christ, or whatever you was doing, it don't have to be game banging, it can be anything, it can be just your life with the devil. Do you know that once you stop doing evil and, and go down the right path, do you know that that devil is gonna come after you? Because you have filed for a divorce or doing the wickedness, you have filed for a divorce. You stop doing wicked things. You decide to just go down the right path. You gave up all the wicked things that you used to do. So this is what we do. We say, man, I'm, I'm done with the streets. Uh, I'm done being a, uh, uh, living my life ruthless. I'm done going to the clubs. You know, whatever we was doing, you know, that, you know that's our past. But now we're walking down a straight path. Well, the enemy don't care nothing about you doing the streets and doing the clubbing and all those big activities that we was doing. He don't care nothing about that. But as soon as you leave, as soon as you get right with Christ and you start walking down the right pattern, that's going to be a problem. Because why? You're going to be one of the toughest warriors. And God will use you as a toughest warrior. And the enemy knows that because why? You know all the enemy's secrets. Why do you think they act that way when you leave a gang or, 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 or you leave an organization or whatever that you got yourself involved with is ungodly or unholy? Why do you think when you leave there they can be mad at you? Because you know all the secrets. You know the codes. You know what's, what's behind the curtains. And every time you know what's behind the curtains and you try, I'm done with this? Man, you think you're going to get away with that? 
You probably will, but it ain't going to be easy because they're coming after you. But as long as you cover in the blood, they can't touch you. That's how that go. You know, I used to be in the streets. I mean, I wasn't no game banger, but I was in those streets. And uh, I did some unholy things, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't godly. You know, I ain't never shot nobody. I ain't never did nothing like that, but it doesn't really matter. A sin is a sin. I did some unholy things. But now that I'm walking down the right pattern, sometimes, you know, uh, you can run across your enemy. Unexpected. Sometimes your past will come back and hunt you. But it don't mean it's going to do anything to you. It's just hunting you because we're covering the blood. All right. So we're going to go <clears throat> to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 30. It said, there is no wisdom and no understanding and no counseling against the Lord. All right. I'm going to tell you right now. If you ain't got no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord, you're lost. The Lord is the only one that can teach us wisdom and counseling. How we get that? We get it from the Bible. How we get that? We study the scriptures. We uh, research. We go from verse to verse. We do what Isaiah chapter 28 says. We do the precept to precept, line for line, a little over here and a little over there. That's how we study the Bible. That's how we, we do our investigation with the Bible. We have to go deep until we search it. That's how we get our understanding. That's how we get our counseling because he is our counselor. So, excuse me. Sorry about that. That's my allergies. But this is how we get our understanding when we uh, study. He is our teacher. The Bible says when Jesus was uh, said in his last days, he said, I will send someone to comfort you. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. So the Holy Spirit will teach us about the, the wisdom, the counseling, the understanding, the knowledge. It will teach us these things. Because if we don't have these things, we're going to be lost. Now, notice I said the Holy Spirit. I ain't said no man. Because man can't really teach us too much of nothing but some bad things. Especially if that man ain't got no Holy Ghost in him. All right. So we're going to go to uh, Job. The wicked man writes in pain in all his days and numbers or the years stored up for the ruthless sounds of terror are in his ears. Why at peace the destroyer comes upon him, he does not believe that he will return from darkness and he shall destine it with a sword. He wanders around for food saying, where is it? He knows that a day of darkness is at hand. Distress terrifies him. They overpower him like the king ready to, for the attack because of his distress out his hand against God and conduct himself ignorant against the Almighty. He was head alone at him with his massive shield. I'm going to tell you right now. A wicked man days is numbered. A wicked man have his time coming. See, the wicked person think they can just do what they want to do and get away with murder. And what I mean by wickedness, I'm not just talking about with, with, with physical. I'm talking about with a mind. Because sometimes we can do things with our mind that can be so wicked. We can think. We can just sit up and just plot and just do things and thinking that we're not going to be held accountable for it. We sit back while we praying, going to sleep, and we are protected that night. Then the enemy sitting there plotting against you or against anybody that's walking in the, in the footsteps of the truth. The enemy sit back and don't sleep. That's one thing we got to recognize. The enemy don't sleep. They don't sleep. They might rest, but they ain't going to sleep. See, rest and sleep is two different things. They're going to get right back up and finish doing what they were doing. They don't want to see nobody happy, especially when you're doing good. All right. <clears throat> Let us go into the book 
of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 13, said, Those were the waters of Merhat, because the son of Israel content with the Lord, and he proved himself holy among them. We're going to read Psalms 95, verse 89. Do not harden your heart as Merhat, but as the days of the Messiah in the wilderness, your father tests me. They tried me, though. They have seen my work. All right, we're going to start right there. Psalm 95 says, don't harden your heart. A lot of us, that's, that's, that's most of our problems. And I ain't talking to say, folks, I'm not talking about the folks that walk in the truth. I'm talking about the folks that's going through. Sometimes we have a, uh, we have a, a heart that's, uh, that, that needs to be fixed on. Uh, we, must, we must call on repentance. And uh, we need operation on the table. We need our heart to be clean. We need our heart to be having some open heart surgery on. Because we're doing some things we got to be us doing. Well, how did you do that? Repent first. And put you on the table and open up the heart that got dirt on it and clean it up. That's the only way we're going to live. See, a lot of folks go through life and they wait till the last minute decide they want to give it up. They decide they do all they dirty work. Do all they dirty work until they get in their deathbed. And all of a sudden you want to repent. Well, I got news for you. Won't you go to Romans chapter 1? You know, everybody want to live like a thief on the cross. We, 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 we can't be the thief on the cross. We got to do what's right. We can't go through life, continue to do evil, and think that we're not going to be held accountable. We're going to be held accountable for everything we do because if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not the sharp knife of the draw, but the Bible do says that I believe in Romans 6 that uh, we are being recorded. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but everything has been noted down. We got to repent. We got to do right, man, because if we don't do right, by the time it comes to that, to that day to be judgment, he's going to say, depart from me. You know, we cut up when we down here on earth. We think we ain't got no, you know, ain't, we can't be touched. Man, we can be hit. And what I'm telling you right now is this Bible is talking about the strife of God. So what this Bible is talking about is we go through life thinking that we can disrespect folks and thinking we can get over on folks and we can murder folks with our words. Uh, 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 we got to pay a consequence for that. You know, we got to keep our mouth off God's people. Because you're going to have to pay the penalty for that. Especially if that person ain't did nothing to you. And we still have mess with that person. All right. Let me go to Isaiah 37, verse 22 to 25. It said, This is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. She has despised you and mocked you. The virgin daughter of Zion, she has shaken her head behind you. The daughter of Jerusalem, who you have we approached and blasted me. That's asking the question. And against... Who you have raised your voice and hearted lifted up your eyes against the Holy One of Israel. Through your servants you have reproached the Lord. You have said, with many chariots I came up in the heights of the mountains and the smallest part of Lebanon. And I will cut down all tall cedars and the choice of cypress. And I will go to the highest peak with the thickness forest. I dug well and drank water, and I sold my feet dried up all the river of Egypt. I'm going to go ahead and say this, yeah. Now, uh, 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 are you going against God? You know, uh, I hear a lot of, I hear a certain message that said, I honestly short the box of God, which it is. And a lot of folks, like I said earlier, they don't, they don't, they don't believe in God, you know. They believe in uh Satan's. Uh, I'm going to say this. A lot of folks are afraid of Satan's. And some folks ain't. Well, let me tell you something. I'm aware of them, but I'm afraid of the one that created them. A lot of folks worship idols. They worship idolizing. They, they worship sun, moon, and stars. No, I worship the one that created them. A lot of folks do things and they figure that they can't be touched. I'm afraid of God. I fear him because I know what he can do. 
you know, as a child, you know, I was growing up and we used to, it used to be thunder and lightning and your mama used to tell you, turn all the lights off in the house because God's at work. That means turn off that TV too. Turn off everything. And you know, I've been taught ever since I was a kid to be afraid of God because my mom and dad told me to be afraid of him because that's who creates you. That's who can get rid of you. So ever since I was a child growing up, I always had that in the back of my head that I'm afraid of God. If he doing thunder and lightning outside right now, I, as a grown man, 54 years old, I don't turn the lights off. I don't turn the TV off. I don't turn everything off because I respect them. We was always taught to turn everything off and just stay silent and let them work and just start praying that nothing don't hit your house. See, I believe in that. I believe in everything he done for me. And I give him praise every time. All right. Y'all got to bear with me because there's just so much information there. So I got to take my time. All right. Let's, let's go to Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 25. For as we know that the law is spiritual, but I am a flesh. Sold into bondage to sin. For who I am doing, I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I would like to do, but I am doing the very thing I hate. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law. Confessing with the law is good. So now I'm no longer am I doing it, but sin which dwells in me. For I know nothing Good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh, but I am willing to present in me, but doing, but doing of the good is not. For what is good that I want to do, I do not want to do. But what I practice is a very evil thing that I do not want to dwell in me. I find out the principle that evil is present in me, that the one who wants to do good, for I joyful and courage with the law of God. And enter man. But I see the different law, prisons of the law, which are sin, which as a member, the wretched man I am, who will be set free from the body of this death. Thanks to be God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, one of a hand of myself, with my mind, I am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh. The law of sin. Let me stop right there. We can't do both. We can't be a Mr. In Between. Now that not now that verse is talking about we can't serve two other gods. In other words, we can't serve flesh and sin. We gotta decide which one we're gonna feed. We gotta decide who's gonna starve and who's gonna eat. You know, I used to feed the flesh a lot. You know, I used to feed, I was feeding it a lot. But when I got started walking with Christ, then the flesh don't get too much. I ain't saying the flesh don't eat, but it don't eat like the it don't eat like the spirit do. You see, when the flesh start getting out of line, I had to pray for control, self-control. I got to pray for repentance. I got to pray for all that because why? It's going I'm gonna be held accountable for it. Like I said earlier, everything is being documented, everything has been written down. So in order to keep a clean slate, I got to repent. I got to repent. Then it all depends who at the dinner table, the flesh or the spirit. Who are you going to feed? When you read the scripture, then you're feeding the, you are feeding the spirit, the soul. But when you're not reading the scripture, then you're feeding the flesh. So somebody getting fat and somebody losing weight. Somewhere down the line, we got to make a switch. Somebody's going to have to starve or somebody got to eat. Me, I choose to feed the spirit. And let the flesh go on the diet. Because if I feed the flesh, I ain't going to have no wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding inside of me. I ain't going to have no counseling. So I decide to let that flesh die for a minute. Let them put, them on, put, put their flesh on starvation. And feed that spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to feed you for a minute. And watch how you become. Watch how your walk start to walk. 
you know, watch people start recognizing. Because see, folks recognize you in the flesh, they're going to talk about you. You're good when you're in the flesh. When you start walking in the spirit, they got, they, got a, they got a problem with you. Because why? You filed for a divorce for being with them. When you file for that divorce of being with the wicked, trust me, it's a good thing. Now, I'm just using some knowledge right now just to get a clear understanding of what I mean by that. When I mean file for a divorce, that means that you don't have to do what you used to do no more. You was married to the streets. You was married to the mother women. And I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about your wife. I'm talking about girlfriends. I'm talking about fornicating. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all that type of stuff. I'm talking about married to wicked activities. I'm talking about married to selling drugs. I'm talking about married to stealing cars and radios. You know, I'm talking about married to the streets, period. I'm talking about married to uh, uh, stealing identity theft. You know, yeah, that's the biggest thing right now. Stealing people identity theft. That's the biggest thing. People get married to that. You know, that's that secret marriage. That's that, that's that secret criminal. Hacking, going inside people's account, taking money out of people's account. That's that dangerous marriage right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't have no problem exposing that because people need to hear that because it happened to somebody somewhere in his life that your stuff got hacked. You know, your Facebook page got hacked. Everything you have been hacked. Somebody was married to it <clears throat> just to get your information. So this is what we do. File for that divorce. Tell the wicked, look here, man, we done. I'm done with you. You might not be done with me, but I'm done with you. I'm about to file for that divorce. We ain't got to go to court for this. I'm going to go my way, you go your way. But we're going separate ways. We're not walking the, we're not walking the same pattern no more. You go to the left, and I'm going to go to the right. And that's how we got to live our life. We got to learn how to separate ourselves away from the enemy. Because how are we going to grow and we still walking the same pattern to save walking? How are we going to grow we walking down the same line he's going down? He's still leeching off you. All right. So let me go to, uh, let me go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 25 and 27. It says, everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it with see perish wealth. For we are in, in perish. Therefore, I run in such a way as of not without aim. I box in a certain way, and I beat the air. But I am disciplined, my body, and I make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, myself would not be disqualified. Did you hear that? That means that if you got self-control, Say you go on your job or you go to your friend's house or your partner's house or your kinfolk's house and you just preach the gospel to one of your cousins now. Y'all sitting on the back porch or y'all talking, y'all shooting the shoot, and all of a sudden you bring the scriptures out and they willing to listen. Do you know that God gets the glory for that? And they listen to you and you preaching and you telling them what's right, what that Bible says, and they willing to make a change. See, we don't have to be at church to get this set. You can be at your auntie house or your uncle Leewar house. And you could be sitting there preaching the gospel right there in the living room. And you will not be disqualified. Because why? You got the word inside of you. You've been studying. You've been eating real good. You've been chewing on the information. You've been letting it digest. You told the flesh to sit down somewhere and let the Holy Spirit feed the spirit. You go to your cousin's them house and you bring that gospel to them. And they willing to listen to you. Now everybody eat. And you won't get disqualified. Why? Because you did your part. You gave God the glory because he gave you a word to say to your people. Watch this here. Let me tell you something. Self-control, that means that we got control of ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Everybody get a pop quiz going through the week. And I say pop quiz a lot because that's one of my favorite words I use. A pop quiz is when you go on your way to work or where you at work or whatever you're doing or at school or whatever you're doing on the highway, somebody cuts you off. You can't be giving people the middle finger and you're saved, man. Sister, you can't be doing that. You can't be cussing folks out and letting down your window. Fella, you can't be doing that. You got to have self-control. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we're going to do it anyway. 
Yeah, we're going to do it, but we got to repent. And we cannot continue to do that. We got to sin no more. Now, you do that one time, that's fine. Repent. That's that pop quiz. You fail the test, but you can pass it by letting it be erased. By repenting. See, repenting is known as the eraser. Once that repent be erased, then you can start all over again. And then here's another thing. And in order for you to pass a test, we must pray for we leave the house from the get go. Pray for we leave. We know that the highway is going to be some ignorant folks on the highways going to work. You got construction, you got traffic, you got people banging their music, and some people got some, some stuff on their car that you don't want to see that pull out their car if you say something to them. You got road rage, you got all this going on. So we got to have self control. We got to be humble. Just focus on where you're going. That's the most important thing. Focus on your destination. We know there's going to be booby traps set up. There's going to be somebody going to cut you off. There's going to be somebody that's going to blow their horn at you. There's going to always be somebody going to do something to you. But we got to have self-control. That's the only way we're going to make it. We got to have that self-control. Then you got to have a mind of peace. You know, I, I tell folks all the time, the best thing to me is have peace. A peace of mind is the best thing to have. When you got your peace, you don't have to worry about nothing. You got your peace. The peace of mind, oh, my goodness. Man, that's better than silver and gold. To me, it is. Have my peace. Man, I love having peace. When I go home, I have peace. When I get in my car by myself, I have peace. Now, I, I know everybody don't want, everybody got a car full of people. Me, I like to ride by myself. When I ride by myself, I have peace. Now, don't get me wrong. When I ride with my wife now, you know, we, that's a family thing. But when I'm by myself, when I'm by myself in my car, I have peace. Because I ain't got nobody to ride with me but me. All right. So let's go to uh, Isaiah 64, verse 7. There is no one who calls on your name who, uh, who arouses himself to take hold to you. For you hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the power of our iniquity. Luke chapter 22, verse 44. And being in anger, he was praying very fervently, and his sweet, I mean, I, I'm sorry, his sweat became like drops of blood falling down from the ground. All right, we got to, we got to, we got to investigate this one. When it says he praying, his sweat began to drop like blood falling from the ground. That scripture is talking about that person going through something. That person going through some trials and tribulations. Anytime the scripture hits you that hard, that means you're going through something. I like that scripture. Because when you going through something, just because we are walking with the truth and we set apart, don't think every day is going to be a good day. We all going to be tested. We all going to have trials and tribulations. What is that thing that we was always told you either in a storm or going through a storm or you're coming out of a storm. It's going to be one of those three that we are doing. But in that storm and coming to that storm and out of that storm, we need to be praying. Because once you start praying, the devil does not like when you pray. See, that's a good weapon that we have. Praying, praying power, that's the best weapon to have. You know, have we ever just went to Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 18, put on the full armor, when it talk about the head of salvation, that's the mind, and the weapon known as your mouth, that's known as the scriptures, the words, and your heart, the chest plate. All that stuff is mean that's what we need to have on every day we leave the house. We must carry Ephesians 6, chapter 10 through 18 with us at all times because we are going against a spiritual warfare. We are all in a spiritual warfare. Whether you know it or not or whether you like it or not, we are in a spiritual warfare. 
and we must have on the full armor to go to war. We cannot relax right now. No, we cannot relax right now. Once said, always said, you know, once you be saved, it's not an easy task because we're going to be some challenges. Your old you is coming looking for you. You know, I did a sermon a couple of years ago called Facing the Mirror. Once you face that mirror and you face you and you tell you I'm done with you and, I, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new me, that means the old you is coming for you. Your old ways is trying to catch up with you because Satan know your old ways. Yeah, they know your old ways and they'll bring some way that some stuff that, that you used to do or something that you used to like and they'll throw it up in your face. They'll do it because why? They want you to turn away from God. They don't want you to have no part of God whatsoever. Once you begin to walk in the pattern where God got you going, trust me, it ain't going to be easy. Once you fight them off, it's different. But as a baby in Christ on that milk, nah, you can't have milk forever. You got to get some meat. That means we got to study to show ourselves approved. That means we got to stay in that kitchen. We got to have that good meat. We got to eat meat. Meat is, is, is tough, but it's going to get you right. Sometimes meat is tough to chew on, but it's going to get you right. That milk is going to just run right through you. We need meat that's going to stick to you. That's what that meat of the word. Once you begin to study and, and do your reference, and you got multiple books in front of you, you got a, a Bible dictionary here, you got your Bible right here, you got your laptop here, you got all your three weapons sitting beside, but beside you, man, you eating, you studying. Now the enemy don't know that what you got going on, he gonna be afraid of that. See, he's not afraid you studying. What he's afraid of is you walking what you studying. See, we can study all day, but if we're not living what we studying, it's useless. He's still going to get you. We have to read what we study and live by what we study. Because you got to realize, Satan so know that Bible too now. He know what's in that dictionary. He know what's on that laptop. He know what's in that Bible. He know all things. You got you to understand that now. He's, a, he's an angelic being. So he knows some stuff. But one thing he got to realize is once you begin to read and study, and walk what you have read and what you have researched and what you have studied, then now he got a problem with you because he can't touch you. Because why? You got your weapons. You got all your weapons in front of you. Then you're praying good. You're praying with a sincere heart, your mind right. So when you pray with a sincere heart, he's going to have a problem with you because he can't touch you. Trust me. No, nah, matter of fact, don't trust me. Trust God. Trust that Bible. Don't trust me. I'm just a teacher. But I allow the Holy Spirit to help me bring the word to you. All right. So, it says is it in Job 10, verse 18. Why then we have bought me out of this womb? Would I have died and no eyes have seen? That means uh, uh, we was always born in the, in the days of trouble. We come out of our mama's womb, we was in trouble. We was in trouble, we come out of our mother's womb. Yeah, 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 we was in trouble. That's why the Bible is so important for us to get our hands on it. That's why the word of God is here for us to get our hands on and study that thing. We're good. So we'll know what we're doing. Because if we don't, we're going to be in trouble. See, people thinking that God's a loving God. Don't get me wrong. Of course he is. But God don't play. Nah, mm -mm, God don't play. He don't play at all. According to Isaiah 45, verse 5 through 7, he said, I created life and I created death. I created good and I created evil. Now this God talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this God talking. See, people better start playing with God. That's why I tell folks all the time. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm just aware of him. God's who I'm afraid of because he got scripture that I read that he let me know he's nothing to play with. Then you can take that same scripture and go into Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, 
with the same verses about what he created good and evil. He created life and death. In other words, he decides who lives and who dies because we take them for granted. That's the reason why I tell folks all the time, don't take God for granted. Every day is not a promise. We just here just to live, but we must study his word. We must enlighten on everything he gives us because he is nothing to play with. Have anybody ever read Genesis 6 and read this seventh verse, I believe, when them fallen angels came down and they slept with the women and they just corrupted the world at that time. And God made a statement say he even, he even regret he even made man. Yeah, read that verse. See, Noah was the only one who had the good DNA because they came down here and they corrupted everything. They slept with everything. They did, they did the wonders of evil. And God was so upset, he said he even regret he even made man. So you think about it. Yeah, he's a loving God, but he's also a God of punishment. He's a God of judgment. That's why he told Noah, get yourself together, because Noah had the right DNA. His DNA was clean. That's why he told Noah, get that ark ready, because I'm finna flood this world up. I don't have time for Satan's. I'm gonna have to teach them a lesson. And folks better realize this. We have to stop idolizing these items. These items is what get us in trouble because the Bible says in Exodus 20 verses, what was that, three? And that 10 commandment, God is a jealous God. That means that we are here idolizing stuff and we're not giving him the praise. Man, he is, he is not playing. I am dead serious, you know. He's not playing with us. Yeah, he loves us, but the Bible says if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. See, folks think they can just do what they want to do and they ain't going to still love us. Man, if we do not repent, or if we do not ask for forgiveness, I don't care if your wife did something to you, or your husband did something to you, or y'all arguing. Look here, man. We better repent to one another, and we better pray to God to forgive us for having an argument. You know what I mean? Because you and your wife are as one. So how can I call my wife an unholy name? I'm talking about me. That's part of me. Or she called me an unholy name. She talking about herself. Because we are as one. So what I'm getting at is that as believers and as walkers, we must recognize where we stand for. If you stand for the truth, stand on it. Stand on the truth ten toes down. Make your feet flat. And make sure the heart is sincere and make sure the mind is clear. Because right now, we are in a spiritual warfare. He is not playing. The enemy is out there persecuting his people and he is going to kill these people. I am dead serious. God is not the one to be played with. He is not the one to be messed with. He is the supreme being of all. He is our father in heaven and he sit on the high throne. He looks down and he is going to judge this world according to those records of what we are doing. And if we don't get it together, it's going to be too late. We shouldn't have to wait till we get to the hospital bed to ask for forgiveness. We should have to wait until we go through hard times and ask somebody to pray for us. We should be praying for the good times so when the bad times come, we, should, we already built for the bad times. So we shouldn't be getting too comfortable because that's when the enemy loves you, when you're comfortable. Let me hit you with this First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 20, and let me, let me let you know, because a lot of folks thinking that we can just do these things when we save, we can't do these things when we save, man. We, we, it's, it's just some things that we, 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 we cannot do. All right, here we go. First Corinthians 10, chapter 20. I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that all things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. 
and I would not have yet should have fellowship with devils. Watch this here. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of the devil. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of the devils. In other words, man, we can't be even with everybody. We cannot sit at the table with unholy people that carry on this nonsense. I don't care who you is. If you ain't got no God in you, man, I can't eat with you. I can't eat none of your food. I don't trust your cooking. Because you might spit in my food. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about the food that we eating at the table as, as for the flesh. I'm talking about the food of the scriptures. You see, you can have somebody at your table that can manipulate you, that can manipulate you, and spit on that verse and confuse you, and you'll, and you'll, be, and you'll sit there and eat the information. So we can't sit at that table. We got to sit at a table with, with a truth at. Will somebody tell you the truth? And you can chew on that and digest that. That's a table that I like to sit at. Now, I can't judge nobody where they're going to eat at. But if I'm going to sit there and eat at a table with somebody, let me sit at a table with somebody going to tell the truth. Let me get my fork and knife, and when the meat hit my way, I can press that fork down and slice that meat and chew on that information let it digest. See, we can't be partakers of the evil people, man. These folks can come to you like wolf and sheep clothing. They come to you with a smile. They come to you gentle. They come to you with uh, all type of little ways. And let me say this. It's an old remedy. You know, you know the folks think the devil is the one that got the red tail, the costume with the fort. No, 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 no. He come in, he's a shape shifter. He shape shifts into people. And that devil can be in anybody. He can move and he talk to people. And you pick up that information and you ain't got no hole in you no more. So we have to be wise of our surroundings. Yeah, we gotta be careful. You know, growing up, you know, we done some things, but I'm talking about the people that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We know these people that are saved can spot a devil anywhere. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is gonna, gonna let you know who's who. The Bible says that the weak and tares will be together. And the only way they can be separated is the angel gonna come and separate the weak and tares. So yeah, we can be in a church together. We can be in a congregation together. But when that angel comes and separates us, he's gonna find out who's his, who's not. So as believers, as set apart, we must all continue to strive for Christ. We must all continue to strive for God. We must do right because every day is not promise. Every day is not a promise. So that's why we must do right. I'm Minister Kimball. Thank you for listening to me. I'm going to go out with a prayer. Just bear with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight's lesson. Father, we thank you for allowing the teaching to be out. Father, I pray that someone have gotten this message. I pray they would chew on the information that are digest in their heart, mind, body, and soul and carry on this week. As we said in your son, Jesus' name, amen.